Oh, okay. Well, there's a record button on the on the uh, Zoom screen. We are now recording. So uh, I'm going to say welcome to anyone who's watching. I'm Harvey Klein, and uh, I'm here right now with uh, Judy Chalmer, Steve Metz, and Adam Bluestein. We're hoping Rabbi Amy will join us momentarily uh, for a conversation that we organized over the last couple of weeks. And um, what I'd like to do is read out loud to everyone what our, whoops, there goes a phone ringing. Let me just double check. No, I get to ignore it. I want to read to you the questions that we framed uh, for this conversation. And they go as follows. In this particular time, when in the context of the fearsome COVID-19 pandemic, with all of its attendant losses and uncertainties, we are unable to be together in person and compounded by the upcoming presidential election with painfully polarized political points of view. How do we, the OZ community, meaningfully engage and participate in these days of awe? Two, how do we love, forgive, and turn back toward ourselves and one another? Three, how do we listen deeply to our inner voices, the core source of our being, that part of us that is created in the image of God, however we understand that to mean, and also listen and relate to others who likewise come from the same source of all being? Those are our questions, and I want to just open it up for the conversation to begin anyway by anyone who might want to jump in. Well, um, being the retiring type and unaccustomed to public speaking as I am, um, with your permission, I'll make a few observations uh, that may explain or uh, excuse, whichever you please, uh, the, the direction from which I'm approaching this. Uh, I, I, I am uh, totally a product of my past. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm a product of my childhood. Uh, my childhood was in was endowed and enriched by mostly my grandfather, who was uh, an immigrant from Russia, and a, a, a religious man, but not, um, but not uh, blatantly, not blatantly a religious man, but he, he adhered to um, the the tenets of, um, as you might expect, a, uh, uh, an Ashkenazi Jew from the from the old country, uh, kept the Sabbath unfailingly, and made it all seem uh, very rich and fulfilling. Uh, and he made it seem that to um, my brother and I, uh, growing up. My brother being six years older than I, but I'm talking about you know from the time I was about four or five years old, um, and it's that richness, uh, and it's the the awe with which I regarded my grandfather, um, uh, and and it it the the his 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 core beliefs and his and his way of living. Were, were as natural to him as breathing. And his, his beliefs were, as, uh, were inseparable from his uh, being. And when you, when you talk to him or interacted with him, um, you, you couldn't help but uh, inspire 
some of what he uh, what he stood for. Uh, and I used as a child to sit next to him um, in shul. Uh, he had, uh, incidentally, uh, he had a magnificent voice. Uh, and uh, I learned uh, about everything that I know from him about davening. And that's the background that, that I bring uh, to my Judaism. Um, I, I was a rebellious fellow. Uh, I didn't live within walking distance of shul, particularly when I was in Ketchikan, Alaska, where I think there probably wasn't another Jew in the whole town. Uh, but even when I lived in places where there, there were Jews, I didn't, I, I didn't live the life that my grandfather lived, but I respected it and it was, I saw how rich it was. And I think that, that in these discussions, that's the, that's the direction from which I come. Uh, and uh, it may be not a very good direction for a modern day congregation, but to me, uh, it's, in, in, it's, it's inseparable, as I'll say farther along in the discussion, it's inseparable from um, wholeheartedly participating in uh, the, the days of awe, uh, the, the Yom Tevim, um, and, and how we regard what we're doing during those times. So that's, that's where, where, where I, uh, the direction from which my remarks come. Uh, I'm sure it's quite out of step with many, many in the congregation. So Steve, I wonder if you could say a little more about how your background and what you've just outlined to us affects or directs you in terms of the questions that we that we want to discuss today, which is about how we as a community can can have that respect for one another and acceptance of each other, knowing that we're all made in the in the image of God. How does your your childhood inform you about how we can be as as engaged and mutually respectful uh, community as possible? Well, first of all, um, the first question that you, you pose about the COVID virus and the election and the, as far as I'm concerned, that is invisible mm. for the holidays and for, for, for me when I enter the shul uh, I, I've tried, uh, not very easy sometimes with some of the sermons and uh, remarks that are made, and uh, I'm not saying anything to you that I haven't said to Rabbi Amy, uh, as you can imagine. Um, and, but, but that all goes away. Harvey, that's all, that's all. The farthest thing from my mind would be the election, the COVID virus. It's, it, it's, 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 a whole nother world. It's a, a partition comes down when I walk in. It it's doesn't exist as part of my world. My world is is separate. When when I walk into the shul for the high holidays, particularly, it's a separate time, and I, I'm I'm separate from the rest of myself for the rest of the year. And that's that's a guide. Uh, that that's that's what happens to me. Uh -huh. So I, I'm sort of fantasizing in my mind's eye, you sitting next to your grandfather in shul, and that was a world unto itself. It was rich. You were inspired. I love that word when you used it a few moments back, that you, you, in, you, you breathed in who he was. And I guess I hear you saying that there's something about that that really is the model for what you aspire to do when you are engaged with the congregation, whether it's uh, in shul or maybe even in a conversation like this? Well, I want to make it clear that um, 
the 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 congregation to which I belonged, um, there there were there were a lot of other people that were inspiring too, not just my grandfather. But what I was struck by was how they all were concentrated on what they were trying to accomplish, uh, which which was a part of their being. Uh, that 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 they were. I could I could look around, uh, which as a six and seven year old I did lots of. Uh, mm -hmm. and I could look around and I could see old Mr. Slonim over there, uh, bent over uh, and davening. I could see uh, Jack Resnick, who never sat down the whole the whole Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. He never ever sat down. He stood the whole damn time. I couldn't believe he could do it, and uh, uh, and so on. Um, and they, but they were all, no matter what background they came from, no matter what their station was or their, their profession was, they were all focused and concentrating on the experience that they were having in the shul. There was nothing every day, there was nothing ordinary, there was nothing, uh, there was no continuity between what happened in the shul and when they stepped outside. Thank you. So I see Rabbi Amy, you have joined us. Welcome. We began our conversation. I'm so, so sorry that I misrecorded the time. I'm awesome. sorry. I apologize. I'm glad to have you here. We've begun our conversation. And I was going to invite Judy or Adam to uh, join in with some of your thoughts. Adam. Great. Thanks. Can you hear me? I'm good. Great. Um, I actually. Um, just kind of jumping off of what of what um, Steve said, um, and and that first question, um, I was thinking about, you know, the mention of the polar the polarized political points of view, and um, I, I imagine uh, I'm that um, Steve and I don't share all of the same politics on um, all issues. But I can really relate to his story about his grandfather, and I could tell almost the exact same story um, that he he really when I am in synagogue, I'm with my my grandfather, um, and I I always feel that way, um, and very similar to the way that Steve described his grandfather, he was a religious man, but not not um, outwardly um, orthodox in any way that you would, you would recognize, but he was walked to shul, you know, every, every Shabbos, uh, you know, every Friday night. He did it at home. He was, he was a, a, like a moral uh, and an ethical person. And um, so I think that the, the, this, I had the same kind of feeling, um, like a flavor, of, of the, the holiday and of Judaism that really comes from him. And um, so I, I, was, I was thinking that even though we all feel different ways about things that are happening, um, I think underlying that um, we feel a lot of similar things, like our emotions and our touch points to things are, are pretty similar. And I, I was just thinking about that as we were getting ready to talk today. Thank you. So may I ask Adam, before, before Judy, yeah. may I ask Adam, um, are, are you, you remember one of the first things I said was that all of that goes away. The election, the, the disparities, the, the conflicts, the COVID-19, it all goes away mm -hmm. uh, and no longer exists for me. Hmm. Does that happen for you as well when you walk in or not? Huh. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know this year, but, um, but yeah, I do. I do agree that there's a sense of being in a different kind of space. Um, and I'm concerned. I'm thinking this year about how to create that same sort of separation without the real separation and without the real experience of walking into the place where where everyone is together yeah thank you thanks well 
Um, you know, I, when Steve, when you began talking, I just loved the, the connection, that sense of love is where you got all that, you know, all that commitment and all that joy. And it made me think that, um, you know, in this year, which is going to be so different from other years, that connecting, that to me, connecting with the many ways that people love our tradition is, um, is going to be nourishing. And I do think there are probably many different ways. Um, you know, I grew up in a very different uh, milieu. Um, I didn't know any of my grandparents. Um, and in fact, was brought up um, by a single, single professional mother, highly identified um, Jewishly, not particularly observant. Um, and um, so in many ways, my experience of uh, Judaism and coming to know and love the traditions has come out of a kind of a void, a kind of a void that was um, part of, I, I was born in 1951, so the, the 1950s, as you recall, a great era of assimilation, of not talking about the war, of trying to just fit in as Americans. Um, so when I became an adult, and actually that happened in Vermont with very little, at the time I was, you know, arrived in the early 70s, there were very, not that many Jews in the part of Vermont where I was living. It came from the shock of having actually grown up in what was a very, tight knit Jewish, little Jewish community where almost everybody around me was Jewish, but it was this assimilationist era. So um, there wasn't a lot of talk about it. Well, suddenly I was in a place without uh, very many Jews and it hit me what I did not know. So for me, it's been a process of learning as an adult. And it's been so important to me to hear the stories of people who, um, it's not like I didn't grow up celebrating the holidays. We did. We were in a highly affiliated family, but a tiny little family. Um, but just the many ways that people, the, the voices, the, you know, some people love the secular, the, you know, the poetry on the side and the, and, and then there's the chazanut and, you know, there's just so, such a huge variety. So I'm actually looking forward to that this year. I think because we're not all coming together in a building, I want to know and hear and experience as much as I can of how people are, are um, celebrating, how people are observing, how people are engaging. And I think that uh, Rabbi Amy and Cantor Steve are doing a fabulous job of inviting us into that in some really new and creative ways. So I'm deeply appreciative of that. So I'm hearing that you're, you're really um, intending, your, your kavana, your intention, is to be receptive to what you can learn and experience from others, even if we're not physically in each other's presence, but in the various ways that we will be able to relate that that's, that's the stance that you hope to bring to the, uh, uh, the times that we're together. Yeah, for me, it feels uh, urgent and imperative because it's not going to be given to me. I'm not going to be able to walk into that building. Uh -huh. So I think it, for me, I feel like I have to um, make sure that it happens in a much more intentional way. I'm wondering if the style and the manner of our prayers matters in the circumstance that we're in because everything is, the world is so upside down because we're at home and not in shul and so on, that um, we all have these different backgrounds we come from and the melodies of our grandparents or our childhood or some other stage of our life uh, 
which may even be recent or maybe from a long time ago, do those, is that essential or is it the experience of coming together in an unusual way what's primary? And I, I ask that because uh, we've, we've discovered that since we're virtual, we can do more collaborating with other communities, even if they're far away. And um, uh, so it, it's, it's reverberating for me that that could introduce some new styles that may take us away, some of us, to our grandfather's voices. Uh, and for others may feel like, oh, it should be new and different because we're virtual. I'm just curious about how that hits you. May I? May I? Um, to me, it's critical that we not try to it's critical that we forget the everyday. It's critical that we forget the familiar. This is a special time. E even, even though Shabbos is, after all, the most revered when you come down to it, these days, they're, they're not called a yamim nor, norim for nothing. They're, they're different. They're different from the rest of the year. They're different from everything else in our, in our liturgy, in our, in our religious experience. And number one, it, 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 what, what is it that attracts uh, somebody to, to uh, Judaism and Judy and Jewish service? And it's, it's when you're in the shul, participating in a service, you're not out there. You're not paying attention to the COVID. You're not paying attention, as I've said before, to the election. You're, 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 this is where you are, and this is so different. And so I feel my biggest fear is, it's a fear that we're going to make it more every day. Uh, I'm sorry to say that um, and, and this is, I, I realize how terrible this is going to sound, but to me, the, the more we try to substitute, not add, but the more we try to substitute English for the Hebrew in the prayers, rather than um, say the prayers in Hebrew and then read them at, the difference is the substitution, the act of substituting uh, English for, for Hebrew, to me, I have a terrible fear of that. And I certainly am no wizard at the Hebrew language, but it's different. It's different than the rest of the world. And it's different than every other place. And if you want to come to shul and feel a sense of awe, uh, which I do, um, and I feel it even at I don't require a an orthodox shul to feel that. I feel it very often at Ohavi Zedek, but it, but it it it's it's not it's not because it's being made easier for me. No, nobody said what's the saying. Nobody said it was going to be easy. It's not because it's easier for me, but it's because it's more meaningful. And I know that I'm not on the street. I'm not someplace else. I'm in shul, and this is a Jewish religion and a Jewish holiday, and this is what we are dedicating ourselves to for this period of time. I'll um, add to that. I, I, I agree um, quite a lot with what Steve's saying uh, in terms of the, uh, the kind of primacy of of Hebrew prayer itself um, and of the actual, um, the sounds I, I think are, are important. Um, so I, I, I do appreciate that aspect of what we do and see that there are a lot of ways to supplement it, but that, that, that is a, a, you know, a primal um, piece. Um, 
on the uh, not on the other hand, just sort of a, a different a different thought is that um, uh, or an, an, an analogy is to Zoom Zoom meetings themselves, which are kind of imperfect, and the technology is um, often wonky, and people don't know how to use it all that well. But um, it sure does make the grandparents happy when everyone's on it and just looking at each other. Um, so there's definitely um, something to be said for the idea that the fact that we're doing anything at all, <laughs> um, that, we're, that we're simply um, really in this space together, um, I think has, has a great value. And, and um, although we can leave behind what's outside to some extent, um, because of everything that's been going on, because there's been so um, little good news um, for, for a long time for a lot of people, we're sort of primed to take things seriously. And so um, maybe more receptive than usual to, um, to either traditional prayer or to, um, you know, to exploring other things that are offered. But, um, but I do feel like, wow, if, like if, Sometimes you have to make yourself get serious for the, for the holidays, but I don't think anyone has to make themselves get serious now, you know, mm -hmm. stuff's happening. Yeah. Well, I have some thoughts um, just listening to that and some questions about um, sacred time and sacred space um, and the ways that that the ways that that is created and the ways that it works. I don't feel the same kind of um, need to separate um, from what's happening in the larger or the secular world. Um, but I think that there are different ways, for instance, um, I think there's a difference between uh, being bombarded by news, being bombarded by um, the busyness of ordinary days of non-yuntif, non um, that yuntif does create um, a certain kind of um, quiet in which you can really reflect. But, but for me, the reflection can include what has been going on. So I'm, you know, if, if I can get some help you know, for anything, either for, you know, the deepest, most personal, you know, how to be a, a human being and, you know, uh, um, how to be reverent um, to how to live in this world um, with all the things going on. I, I, um, I could use all the help I could get. And so um, I'm not at all averse to having reflective time about the world within the Yom Tov. To me, that's really different from being in it and kind of, you know, in that everyday, it just, um, everyday busyness. Um, so anyway, those are just some of my thoughts about sacred time, sacred space, and what we contemplate, how we contemplate. I find myself thinking about connecting and 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 I think I think in terms of connecting in two directions if you will uh, and I'll go on a brief tangent of, of memory I can recall probably when I was about 14 or 15 for several years in a row on Kol Nidre night after going to services I would take off and just go for a long walk. It was safe in those days in that place. I could go for a long walk and go inside and review the year and, and, and do some inner searching and trying to make sense. And that came after being with the congregation, the community, and it was a large shul. And in those days, I think I was certainly um, prone to being judgmental as an adolescent. I knew yes from no and black from white and all that. So what I aspire to now in my life is to 
be able to find a way of feeling a, a sense of community with those people who choose right now where my life is to be of the community of Ohavi Tzedek. And we are diverse. We are remarkably varied in ways that I don't even know, but yet we are. And as I think um, part of the question that, that framed this conversation makes note of the last question about we're all made from the same source of being, however we think about that. So I'm, I'm challenged to, to look for and seek a sense of connection with those who might seem disparate from me, who might seem other, and yet we're all God's children, and we all choose to come to the Zoom sessions of, of the holiday. And, and I, I, I look for, and I get moments, and I'm thinking right now about the many years that I've been in, in the sanctuary uh, uh, for the holidays and, and enjoying those magical moments where there's a sense of we, we've come together and we're listening or we're, we're quietly being together. Uh, it's not every minute of the service by any means, but those are so important for me that's the kind of connection with the world that I seek and I, I savor. And I also need the opportunity to go inside. And part of the inside, I think, uh, Steve, you bring that to mind in terms of the, the music that I know and the Hebrew that I'm familiar with, that, that that speaks to me, although I know it doesn't speak to everybody who happens to choose to be part of our community. So it's a, an ongoing invitation is the way I take it and challenge to, to do both, to connect with what really nourishes my personal soul and allows me to connect with the soul of others who are with me in some manner during this time. I'd like to I'd like to say, I don't mean to run off at the mouth or anything, but I'd like to say that um, I appreciate the congregation. I appreciate being with members of the congregation. However, when I stand up in front of the ark or at my seat and I recite the vidui or the al -chait, and I realize that the translation is, we have sinned. We have done this. We have done. When I when I read that, um, to me, I, I I change it and say, I have done this. I have done. I'm the one that's taking responsibility. If I want to change, which I mean, we're supposed to in, be introspective and and change uh, how we've behaved, and we hope for a good judgment. And if you can't acknowledge it without putting it on somebody else, uh, I, I think that the most important thing is to make yourself the most uh, uh, the most open and the most uh, accepting person you can be. And then after that, you can help other people or you can inspire other people. But if you don't start with good raw material, um, it's it's pretty difficult, and so to me, it's intensely personal when I when I stand up and I recite the 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 uh, the, the prayers. Uh, I I try to to stand in front of, if you will, stand in front of God, and have God look at me and say, either you're worth something or you got a long way to go. I could just um, add to, to what, what both of you guys just said. Um, I, I think that you know, as much as we're driven to, um, to take things seriously, to reflect this year, um, I also feel that um, we have 
at least I do, and I, I think others, there's, there's like a difficulty in letting your guard down um, to be receptive, to, um, to really look at yourself and to um, think about the way that you interact with others. And I think that right now, um, this year, this month, um, that's particularly um, challenging. I, I, I know that I can feel um, you know, in my body that um, I've had to defend um, myself um, from things that are going on in the world, just physically, from germs, from other people keeping their space from me, you know, and, and keeping away um, even, you know, feelings that emotions that we have that um, just aren't productive. So we're sitting here in pandemic, um, locked in our homes for a long time, you know, limited in what we can do. Um, like, you can't really deal with all of that. So like, there's a sense that um, a lot of us have had to maybe shut down some things that we that we would feel. And so there, I think there's a challenge in just um, letting ourselves open up and, and really feel and be aware of what we've done and of what we're really feeling at this time. And just to recognize, like even seeing, um, if I can borrow from like non-Jewish tradition, but um, just from kind of like my yoga experience to, to actually notice um, in your body, right? What's going on? Where am I, where am I holding this? And to recognize um, how much we might be doing that. It hurts. <laughs> yoga hurts. <laughs> Kabbalists talk about that too, by the way. Uh, and, and I'm curious about whether um, that mindfulness is easier or harder being uh, apart from each other physically at this time when we approach and, and how that plays out. I mean, listening to Steve talk about it, I mean, everything you're saying has me reverberating about that. How can we get to where we would feel this as if we were together? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that um, Steve described that well, that feeling of being um, on your own and being um, responsible and accountable to yourself, but also being part of, of this community. And um, I don't know, in, in a sense, um, the, the online conversation um, isn't entirely, um, 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 is, or is somewhat conducive to that because we're here, but it's okay to withdraw a little bit. It's not socially weird, um, that I think there is a little bit of an opportunity to decide the degree of, of togetherness or aloneness that, that you wanna have. So that may work really well for some people. Yeah. What do you think, Judy? Mm, I think um, that there are inevitable losses in this time and that um, there's, I do, um, for me, um, it's more helpful to, for me to think, well, how can I acknowledge those losses? How can I um, not try to replace them, but rather focus on what is here? What can I get in this setting? What, what sort of the positive? You know, it reminds me in a way of community or relationship where in, you know, in relationship, and I'm thinking about the other questions of the, of the day today about um, how can I approach people in my life with a foundation of assuming integrity and what wonderful things can come through that as a way of relating. Um, it's similar when I think about how to approach the holidays this year. Um, it's not a question of integrity or not integrity. It's more of a, a question of where is the opportunity? Where it's more, I think it's more, where is the chance for that experience of real connection 
um, among the congregation and also real connection with the tradition and the prayer and the meaning. Um, I sort of am gonna have to, for myself, focus on what is and not try and tell myself it's gonna be the same because there really are some things that I'm gonna miss. You know, there's just no, just as I'm grateful for seeing the faces of my family, you know, on Zoom, but I miss holding them. You know, I'm gonna miss the, the physicality of the service. There's just no, no getting around that. But Judy, when you see the rabbi and the cantor standing on the bima, and the, both of them praying for us, uh, uh, that, that, that has to be some kind of inspiration and point of focus for you. At least it will be for me. For me, when I see that, I know where I am. Well, thank you for saying that, Steve, because that makes it feel worthwhile. It's a really big deal to, to set up the system that we're creating. And, um, and, and, and I keep wondering, is it going to make a difference? And you just validated it. I appreciate huge. that. As Bernie Sanders would say, huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too bad he doesn't say it in Hebrew. Yeah, I mean, I also think about um, just little ways that keep that we can be, you know, actually together. So, um, you know, taking taking a good long walk with the family is, um, you know, usually a part of of the holidays um, for us and. Um, you know, I'm just thinking about if there are small groups that we could include in that and if there are ways to just get a few people together, um, the family or a couple of people who can who can fit in, in the right kind of arrangement just to share some, you know, to share the experience um, together too, I imagine would be a nice, uh, middle ground in a way to have a little a little more contact um so i'm i don't know if we have any plans for people to to get together and do things like that but certainly to think about ways to uh to start um walks or um just some sort of in-person small gatherings you know as some people have been doing but we are out. going to be uh distributing they're, they're not ready yet but they will be ready soon. Uh, Tashlich maps. Mm -hmm. So um, our community can form small clusters around neighborhoods uh, at bodies of water. And uh, we're not gonna set a time for people and let them take it from there. And, uh, and, and we hope that that'll give people that kind of opportunity. We're also gonna be doing some lunches in the sukkah once it's time for Sukkot. But I hear you. Yeah, good, good. The more, the, the more, the better. Yeah, thanks. There's so much creativity now, I feel, coming from our leadership. So thank you again. So much creativity. It's, um, it's lovely, really lovely. Yeah, it's been a real benefit of the, um, of the format, I think. Um, much like the uh, the conventions that we've been we've been witnessing, uh, we're actually in some ways uh, better and and um, more interesting and informative um, than they might have otherwise uh, been. Um, and certainly, we're able to involve a lot more people. So, I mean, I've spoken with a few um, OZ members who have um, you know roles in the service. Um, and being excited about that and kind of like having the time to, to prepare for it and kind of think about, um, you know, either performing their part or doing their part, um, 
and, and how that's going to impact the whole. Um, and I think that that's, that's cool. That's been a nice um, way to bring more people in um, in a way that feels like not, not rushed, but, but kind of um, mindful and, and, and just thoughtful. So I appreciate that. And I know other people do too. Thank you for that observation. I, 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 re I really appreciate thinking about how, um, how we as a community, because more of us are indeed actively involved in the making of what is going to be presented on the holidays, um, that it really changes the quality for those of us who have any role of the whole experience of what it is to be living in this time with these circumstances at the time of, of the high holidays. How have we done, Harvey, on the questions? The dry questions. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think people who watch this will make their own conclusions. I, I find that it was, it has been a, a, a very interesting conversation, different from the earlier one that we had with a couple of other folks. And, and I'm grateful for that. I, I think that's part of the wonder of, of setting such an opportunity and seeing where we happen to take ourselves in the conversation. I think we've spoken to the questions in in, in an interesting way that that is more for me more spiritually grounded rather than if you will practical and um i i'm grateful for that that's that's my two cents i'm grateful for the heart connection that this conversation and the others uh offers not only to all of us talking to each other but to be able to share with the community that this community is about the people. And so a close and intimate conversation is just heart opening and nourishing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think I, I, great. go ahead. Right, no, I, I, I appreciate the, just being able to be a part and to, to be uh, um, honored to be in the company of such uh, such wise folks, but um, it, it, it is really a, nice to have the conversation and to, um, to make the connections. So thank you. Well, I thank everyone. Um, this really has been lovely. And I think we've reached a good point to say uh, uh, this, this is the end of this particular conversation, although it will reverberate amongst ourselves and also hopefully for others who, who get to watch and, and and listen to what we've what we said thank you again and if we could all just walk into shul or turn on the computer and forget about covid elections you know right wing left wing forget all that and be jews intent on saving or or stripping away the baggage from the previous year, if we could do that, then I think we've accomplished a lot of what the Yomim Norim are supposed to do for us. That's a wonderful last word. Thank you.